Good morning. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fertile and multiply and fill the earth. There's this um, growing trend among young people, um, my age, generation, following and proceeding, um, where uh, it takes longer to get married. And in many cases, it takes longer before families are started. And then in some cases, families aren't started. It's just, let's just get married and become dinks. You know what dinks are? Double income, no kids. Um, and that's not to say, uh, you know, a couple that struggles with infertility, uh, that, that, that's a very real thing. And um, couples that struggle with infertility are often uh, hurting very much because they desire children. But the uh, idea that uh, a couple would marry and decide, make the conscious effort to not have children, to uh, have surgical things done to not have children, um, is kind of upsetting because if we think about marriage, part of the purpose of marriage is for the procreation of children, right? And so God um, floods the earth, right? He spares Noah and his family and all the animals, and then he, uh, you know, lets the water recede, and he says, okay, get all the animals off the boat. There's a reason why he, you know, had the animals get on the boat two by two, right? Because it takes two. Um, and so the animals can do their animal thing, and then also, then his family went out and, okay, now fill the earth, right? Fill the earth. But there's kind of a, a very selfish tendency to say, no, I don't want to do that, right? I want to live for me. I want to do what I want to do. I want to make sure that I'm happy. I want to make sure that I can, um, you know, travel and I can have nice things and I can drive a nice car and I can do all of these things that make me feel good. Well, those of you who are parents know that the sacrifices that you make for your children, um, that ultimately those sacrifices um, that you make, and when you see your children, there's a level of pride that you, you can't have in a car, right? You, you, can, you can look at your Mercedes, and you can look at your kid, and even if your kid's a screw-up, um, like many of us are, um, still there's a level of pride because that's part of you, right? You created that. You can buy a Mercedes, right? That's, somebody else created that. But to create your offspring, to work in cooperation with God and creation, there's something beautiful about that, right? There's something that people desire with that. And so we recognize the beauty of family, the beauty of family. This covenant that God establishes with Noah, it's a covenant that's established for the family, right? Kind of establishing this fundamental unit of society. We look around and family's under attack, right, in all sorts of different ways, whether it's the kooky gender stuff or whether it's, you know, just rampant divorce um, with, for no reason, um, whether it's saying marriage can be, you know, between a man and a horse, which that sounds crazy, but, you know, just wait five more years. It'll probably be legalized. Is it legal in Canada yet? No? Okay. It will be. Um, we just kind of think of the idea of, uh, of the madness. Because if we can destroy the family, then we can destroy society. Satan knows that. Satan's very smart. What does Jesus say to St. Peter in the gospel? He says, get behind me, Satan. He rebukes him, Right? The word that's used for when Jesus is speaking to demons and possessed people. He rebukes him. He says, that is so wrong. You're not thinking as God does. You have to think as God does. We have to recognize that we're called to do the will of God. We have to recognize that God has established a covenant with us. Not like the covenants that he established in the Old Testament, right? That had to be reestablished and reestablished but a new and eternal covenant through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, right? That Jesus Christ is calling us to go out into the world and to baptize all nations, a spiritual procreation, right? To make disciples, to go out into the world and to spread the gospel, to help others to recognize the value of our life. That it's not just about here and now what we have. It's not about how big we've built our grain silos and how much grain we have to put in them. But that it's about what we're doing so that we can further the kingdom of God. It's about where we will go. 
I had a funeral yesterday. It was a very, it was a big funeral, um, and it was beautiful. How many people came together to surround uh, uh, this this man who died, uh, and to pray for him, to pray for the repose of his soul, to pray for his family, um, and to hear of some of the things that he had done in his life, and how he had affected and touched people and led them closer to God. And then to think about it, that kind of the journey of life, death is when we really begin, right? Here we are, toiling, struggling, trying to do the right thing. But it's at death that our life really begins, right? We don't want to think about that. We don't want to think about death. We don't want to think about the fact that for some of us, death may be more imminent. Well, for some of you, it may be more imminent than others, but... I could pull out of here and get hit by a Mack truck. So to be prepared to live a life in which we are recognizing that we desire heaven, to live here on earth for heaven, to live now as if we could be in heaven tomorrow, to live our lives in such a way that makes God more present, makes God more present to others. To be fruitful, to fill the earth with holiness. So as we continue this Holy Mass, let us ask the Lord that we may continue to be faithful, we may continue to grow in that faithfulness, and we may continue to strive to do His will each and every day.